Well, speaking of bleeding, perhaps in a response to the first season of Westworld, the European Parliament released a draft report proposing a kill switch for robots to limit the amount of damage they do when they turn on us. The proposal on robot governance includes general principles about what to do uh, when or if robots become self-aware, including liability issues, a classification system for the registration of advanced robots. Now, what do you make of a set of ethical principles for robots, Scott? Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the closer we get to you know, modern AI or, or we, we start realizing our science fiction ideas of what AI can do, the more skittish humans become about what that means. And without taking it too far in that direction, I think it's probably a good idea. Like you, if you have a, a machine in a factory that is pumping out a bunch of aluminum cans or something, um, those have safety off uh, features and functions so that if something goes bad, somebody's sleeve gets caught in there and a sensor sees it, the entire system shuts down. Um, this is true. A lot of power tools now. It's, it's not anything new to the way we deal with our machinery. Um, it's just that we're getting to the point where we can start having robots do a lot of things that are sort of dangerous, but like even on like assembly lines for cars, those big swinging arms that are all robotic, they have safety stuff in there. So that if one of those goes nuts and they completely lose it and just start swinging around and slapping everybody, they're going to shut that stuff down. So I'm all for it. It's just really hard to avoid the science fiction side of me that wants to go, Oh, we're getting closer to when the robots take over and we can just push a button and have them all stop moving or whatever. Very Westworld, but um, I, I think this is something we already do, and it makes sense as this gets more advanced that we do that there too. Mm -hmm. Well, Burke, uh, if we could take the Burke cam, he has a little uh, note for us. He uh, loves robots and you know works with a lot of. He says sl a sleep switch would be better rather than a kill switch. Just put him to sleep. Just rest. That's a good point. If we're talking about. Um, literally killing the robot, like stopping it from existing ever again, bricking it essentially. That is a different conversation. A sleep switch or an off switch or whatever, that makes more sense. And I, I can't imagine them doing more than that. You're talking about you're talking about potentially robotics that are millions of dollars of investment and product and whatever. You can't just kill it and brick it and bring another one in. It would have to just be able to shut it down. We need the ability to go stop and have it stop. Mm -hmm. That I'm totally with. But let's not brick it. You know, any more than if my phone starts freaking out, I should be able to just reboot it, not, you know, have it die. Well, so I don't, I'm with I don't want to go too far into semantics, but I think, you know, a kill switch, like that's just a term for turning off a machine, right? But like mm -hmm. proposing a sleep switch, that's already ta taking, that's already considering like that we don't want to say we're going to kill the robot. We don't, you know, we're just going to put it to sleep. So, I mean, I think that's, <laughs> as robots become, you know, not just the things that are driving us around, but, you know, care robots, that's going to be a big deal. People taking care of, you know, jo jobs that people don't really want. And at some point that maybe... Uh, when we are, uh, you know, hopefully our families will take care of us, Scott. I mean, we've done a lot for them, but it might be a robot. It might be a robot that's with us in our last days, like doing all the things, because maybe we don't want our kids to take care of us in those times. So, you know, does having, you know, it's it would be good to humanize these robots that might be who we are spending our last days with. That's true. But if I've got a robot changing out my IV when I'm 85 and... Its name is Larry, Larry the robot, and he's a real sweet guy. And I can talk to him and say, oh, Larry, what'd you do today? And Larry says, well, sir, I blah, blah, blah. And he's very conversational and has adopted some AI routines that make him seem very human to me. This is all wonderful. I love the idea of this. But if he is doing my IV one day and he yanks it out and just starts stabbing me with it over and over and over because he's hit a, some kind of loop and he's glitching out, I want to be able to go Larry off or something. Mm-hmm. And have Larry stop stabbing me with a with a knee. <laughs> so that's my thinking, you know. I, I I'm all about this idea of this humanization of them. I want a robot caretaker when I'm older. I'm all in on this, but I just need it not to freak out and stab me with a needle. Right. Cause like what if Larry is also in charge of your finances and all of your family's finances? And Larry says, you know what? Like He's 85. He lived a good life. It's really expensive to take care of Scott at this point. I think stabbing him with a needle until he dies is better for everyone. Right. And I need a kill switch, a kill switch for that. That's <laughs> nice. Also, I'm not putting... I, now that you're mentioned, now you've gone into the financial world, I do not want Larry in charge of my finances. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> Poor Larry.